here we go. Uh, this is Flash Somebody at another episode of In a Perfect World. You know, so far I didn't host, haven't got a hostage in here with me so far yet. But it's early. Anything could happen. Uh, we're over here at the Real Liberty Media dot com and i even got a channel now channel 11 i think is uh 11 for the perfect in a perfect world podcast <laughs> anyway we got um hanging out in the rlm barman beetle grimner moose girl kate asmo chelsea Doni, chloe chloe d underscore c echelon me gooberzilla i be don c J Dread, Master Brow, Pox Five, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce, Rain, R L M Fluke, Rob Works. Yeah, Rob might I might guilt Rob into jumping on the show for a little bit. Uh hey Vinny, Vinny's here. Phantom. The Phantom's always lurking. Colfax one oh one Cyborg Noodle Dakota Frumpy Graham Z Gromit Java Doctor Two Jays Nine Jays Kozu Skittle and Slim Jim Flim of the neighborhood. There's the RLM Chatty Cathy crowd. Voluntary hostages. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it, it's a toss of a coin. Because you never know what kind of crazy shit we're going to say or not say on, on the In a Perfect World program. Like last week, we had Grimner was challenging reality a little bit there threw in a couple of outside of the box questions and speaking of outside of the box questions let me open this uh link here i found a guy from this is like the 1970s uh he was explaining how we're being screwed on on the uh nuclear not that it doesn't make weapons and not that it doesn't make energy. It's that the way the government has made the laws to suit the crime to keep it from us using it properly. Anyway, this guy, what was his name? Uh, I think I got to open the link. Uh-oh. Wish me luck with this. Sometimes I don't catch them in time. And they go blasting off. But his name is Galen Windsor. And he was a big shot in the nuclear building facility world and the working with the nuclear shit hands-on. And his story is way different from anything I ever heard. So, if you're interested, here I'll just post the guy's um, quick link about a nuclear scam. Because I like my conspiracy theories raw. Whoops. And then I turned the damn thing on. Whoop. Okay. No. Can't cut. Can't stop it. It's out of control. Okay. Here we go. Hey, I'm not real good at the computer thing, Moose. Don't worry. But I'll get it straight sooner or later. But I, the last couple days since the Dork Table episode that I had on Saturday, um, I've been working on my little hobbies around the house and such, playing games. Talking to the wife about the state the world may or may not be in, because me and Cirque disagree about a, a few fundamentals. And whether she uh, believes me or not, is that's questionable. I think she thinks I'm teasing. So whether, you know, whether I mean it or not, I have my I have my way with questions, and one of them is where's all the proof of anything that we're told? Nothing, nothing. It's always a book or somebody's word, and shit. The books turned out to be a dis quite the disappointment. Hell, I mean, you might as well look at Sherlock Holmes as a history book if you're gonna look at the shit they give us in school. Yeah. What will it be tonight? morphine or cocaine and one of the greatest thinking minds of the 18th century was it 19th century 18th century huh? thought of that shit hey i'm gonna get high and go solve crime 
and then my doctor friend that keeps me alive between uh, trips will write stories about it and someday I'll be famous well actually the truth of it is Doyle was a doctor and back in those days doctors were not paid well for what they did you were lucky to survive normal fucking life being a doctor so he wrote short stories on the side to encourage his income so he made a few more pounds to live on and that was back in the day when stuff was uh, affordable so I don't know what the numbers are but I know what the idea is as usual <laughs> but yeah uh, so we got Sherlock Holmes in the White House don't we He's, no, wait, who would be the guy that cleans the swamp? Um, swamp thing? <laughs> we, we got swamp thing in the White House, and he's just whipping ass and taking numbers. I don't, I have no idea what he's doing. I read very, very little about America, except for what I see on the, uh, on the links, usually. Maybe over at, um. Mines, sometimes I'll open a few things. Or going over to the realliberty.org site. Still cooking. They're, they're working on it. But it's fun to play over there. And I have seen a link or two that made me giggle. Uh, that's my favorite. Well, next to boobs. Boobs, laughing, food, I think. But that's another story for another show. I'll try to do that on the dork table Saturday. Uh, there's no audio and no video. Wait, no, on the video and no video on the live now. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Miss Kate is directing traffic on the reallibertymedia.com chat. And like usual, I don't speak the computer talk, so... I miss out on all the good stuff, but I don't know. Let me see what's his name again. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, Galen Windsor. It, this goes back to the days when, when I was, I was in my teens and growing up into my twenties when all this shit was happening with the nuclear plant. We used to go to a a beach up near San Luis Obispo called Pirates Cove. And it was on the beach underneath the nuclear plant. <laughs> so we we swam and did all that, you know, beach shit right underneath the nuclear plant. What, what 40 years ago? 30 years ago? Think about what year it was. 78, 79. It was a while ago, shit. Don't even want to think about how long ago it was. But for all the crap that the world's gone through in the last 59 years I come out of it fairly unscathed mm. hurricane and earthquake but outside of that n nothing real major devastation and that, they were reported pretty bad and I, I guess they were but I was working to, to get shit back together so it's harder to notice how bad things are when you're in the middle of it than if you're looking at it that's why they do this to you on the news all, all the time. They do it to me, too, by the way. I just don't... Mm, what's the right word? I don't think it affects me. That Yeah, because we, we've we had this conversation on the dark table over the years. And some part of me doesn't feel the effect of society on me. You know, I do their little dances and uh, paperwork and whatnot and don't do anything in, in society that's going to end up in a crime <laughs> or be a crime or whatever the fuck that all is. And life is good. And then the older you get, the, the slower things seem to get. It's not the great party <laughs> that once upon a time it was, you know, uh, stay at home with the wife is, uh, hmm. it's what it's comfort. I think that's what it is, because when I was younger, I wasn't so concerned about the comforts of life. I think I was more interested in uh, having a good fucking time. And I had a terrible knack for doing shit that would scare alcoholics, so... Eh. <laughs> 
Well, it's all a matter of interpretation. But while other people were wrecking cars, you know, as a result of their drinking, the result of my drinking is, eh, I might try that. <laughs> so, eh. but here I am all these years later, still breathing, still walking around. Sometimes wonder how it all happened. You know, it's like you get this head full of memories, but 59 years of it, and you get kind of distracted by the past while you're in the future so you kind of what's the right way to put that not you me <laughs> check check but I, I try to leave it out you know and not dwell on it but eh. some people they call it history and politics and what it is is a way to keep you stupid and sedated and the proof is in the pudding by the way folks and folkettes out there in radio land listening to the in a perfect world podcast this afternoon because well it's tuesday and what the fuck you got better to do on a tuesday work maybe you're at work or maybe you're busy doing something that you're already obligated to do uh am i early i thought it was um oh no i came on at seven o'clock Seven o'clock, Denmarkian time, because I, I live with these people that they think it's like seven o'clock right now. They don't know any better. It's not my fault, but I've tried to tell them I denounced the clock, and they said, "Well, we didn't, so shut up." <laughs> and that pretty much describes society. You know, whatever society deems necessary, then that's what society is going to do. And the problems that we've had over the last, oh, forever, is <laughs> the politics and the people that represent the politicians are bald-faced liars. They're uh, probably the scummiest of the scum among us. If you want to find a piece of shit, look for somebody sitting in the House of Congress. <laughs> Or maybe the Senate. Ooh, ooh, there's some real weirdos in that group. Because uh, I learned on this link listening to this guy talking about nuclear. Said that the way Al Gore got all this crap started with this uh, bullshit uh, global warming crap was he attended a class under this big shot professor. Now, what he doesn't tell anybody is that he got a D in the course. <laughs> and he didn't show up very often. And the only thing he showed any interest in was this other uh, scientist's explanation of what he saw happening to the climate because of man-made shit going into the climate. Okay, well, we, uh, Gore based his story off this shit, right? And later on, the guy that originally wrote it denounced it. But here we are, global warming, climate change, getting conned again, hustled. I mean, we got hustled on energy, we got, what, food, water. What the hell, did, what hell have we got left that they haven't, you know, fractionalized, made it into garbage so that it's virtually unusable? Because if you think the results that we get out of societies and life in general are happenstance, oh, I think you need to look it up. Maybe you should find a, a computer and go look it up and see what the computer says. Mm. My favorite is the my Ten Amendment rights. <clears throat> the Ten Amendments to the Constitution that are protected. Uh, that shit was supposed to protect me from them, not protect them from me like it's turned into. Crying out loud, everything's a threat to the fucking government? When did that start? Oh, about 1776 when they started it. I mean, you can't tell me that this mess that we've gotten ourselves into, that it was represented to us honestly and from the very beginning, we always heard the truth 
and nothing but the truth and all, <laughs> all that bullwinkle shit. You know, <laughs> it's it's a joke. <laughs> but on the good side. <laughs> You don't have anything left that they can take from you. I mean, me, you, Cirque, all of us, you know. It's this insane society where people uh, people think that a group agreement signed by this certain person in a robe, you know, chanting in Latin, makes this idea the only thing that we can do hmm. and I wonder because the crimes that the big fuckers do to us little people we can't do anything about that what are you going to do talk about it on the internet like anybody has the fucking time if they can hear it they've got at least got the time to hear it but to actually go out into the world itself And make a dent in the reality that's already fucked up beyond repair. <laughs> They've massacred everything. We've been uh, we've been scammed on everything. Wow, crying out loud! I was just pissing and moaning about nuclear a minute ago. I don't know. In a perfect world, if we'd even have nuclear, I don't see. Uh, in my mind's eye, I don't see the necessity for it. That was very loud. What did I do? Uh-oh. Something was very loud. And it's a sign. Ah. Well, I'm lost for words now. Thank you, Moose. Uh, I don't know what I did. That was very loud, but tell me and I'll try to do it again for you. For your listening entertainment here on <laughs> the real liberty media.com you know where everybody's beautiful and stuff i'm i'm stuff but hey you know some people are just you know beautiful and everybody loves them so what they what they do is they they run them for public office and then they swear an allegiance to israel and then they get the money to run for an office, okay? And you've got two idiots to choose from, basically, because third party's just a bunch of crap. Third party won't ever go anywhere. That's why it's a third party. But that's a, a whole other story in itself. But you got your red side and you got your blue side. and Together they make purple. But, oh, was that loud? I'm sorry. I was just fucking around on the musical world <laughs> in a perfect world maybe I should resort to my pipe and slow the pace down so I don't do anything so destructive as lick a harp <laughs> that's an old joke from the long ago when I <clears throat> my best friend played a harmonica well at the time we were we were pretty close friends for five, six years, but well, we parted ways because I think I went off to uh, North Carolina. And st this happened to the, him, and this happened to me, and we ended up spending less time talking and over the years. I haven't even, don't even know if he's still alive. <laughs> I got married to Cirque, and boy, the traffic stopped on my, you know, from my friends and family so I just let it all go <laughs> and I really haven't made much of an attempt to uh, contact anybody except my immediate family for years doesn't seem to be appropriate what are they going to do come here for a week or two and visit Denmark I mean please that's that's like torturing somebody because once you've been here for a couple of weeks then you don't want to go back to where you started at hmm Yes, I think it's that that nice. But there's other places that were that nice. Baja was that nice. And the Mexicans, they didn't give a shit that I didn't speak Espanol. They just said I was crazy for not speaking it. But outside of that, they knew what I was saying. Because they're Mexicans. <laughs> 
English is in their blood. <laughs> it's not their fault. But, you know, I guess I could... Uh, Cirk sometimes knows that I catch a word or two in a, something they're saying because I've heard certain things so much over such a long period of time. But it's still, when you talk fast in Danish, it it's very hard for me to follow it. So I don't even try for the most part. Anyhow... <clears throat> Where were we? In a perfect world, I was bitching on the nuclear and the electricity. I've bitched about it, but I don't think there's anything left. We've just got reruns of uh, old footage here on the uh, In a Perfect World because there's not much that the government hasn't fucked up. If they touched it, it's fucked up. It's, it's not my fault. I didn't vote for them. I'd like to see them all go. And then just... My my version of what would happen is, if you didn't have a global fucking crap world to deal with, you'd have to deal with your immediate people that you see and can deal with in, a, in your own area. And that's going to be what's going to end up happening, I think, is we're going to have to depend on the neighbors and, you know, and your own ingenuity to survive whatever the fuck these lunatics in Congress and Senate got in store for us. <clears throat> and I've made a point of trying to tell people this for a long time. The POTUS has got the power of the pen. Yeah, he can write a bill and he can do this and that and the other thing. But he can't stop Congress. Congress can stop him, but not. It's, see, but they tell you in the, in the public forums, you know, amongst your average Joe voter that doesn't know how many justices or Jews or not. <laughs> you know, something unimportant like that. Why would I need to know how many of those guys do that? <laughs> I think it's important to know because, well, as the chains get tighter around our collective throats in reality, you know, on paper, everything's on paper. I don't... See, that's... That's why I think I've separated somehow kind of mentally and then living away from all the hustle and bustle. It's really, uh, uh, it's energy changing, I think. You know, and I had a, <laughs> I have a lot more energy now, now that I've got the time to fuck off than I ever had when I was, you know, doing shit and staying busy and all that kind of crazy crap. Now I can sit back and listen to other people tell me the truth about something that I've been lied to about my entire life, right up to today, till I heard the guy talking about the nuclear. My impression of nuclear was according to the guidelines of the law, just like everybody else. And I lived in New Jersey when Three Mile Island went, but I don't, I don't notice like a third arm or anything. I've, I didn't come out of it. I wasn't that close, but it, I was close enough. I guess when you're talking, you know, with the nuclear, the scary part of it, ah, uh, the meltdown and all this kind of shit. Well, he explained how that happened, <laughs> and he explained what nuclear waste is. And when you find out what they call nuclear waste, it, you're going to be really disappointed if you hear the show. I mean, I'm not going to assume that you're going to go to your room right now and put it on. <laughs> but it's worth it's worth a listen. I give it that. I mean, I've heard some shit on the internet that <laughs> the the wildest from catfish Cooley to uh, what's his name here to Galen Windsor and all the comedians in the middle. And my wife still ain't home from work yet. Seven, 7.30 at night. She got stuck. They missed, uh, messed up their train scheduling tonight. So poor baby is still hustling her way home to the casa. <laughs> anyway, this uh, in a perfect world tonight. Hmm. I got a perfect world, so Christ, I don't know what to tell people. They, it's really just a matter of where your mind's at, I think. You know, the chains around you are, they're there, and you know it, but 
if you avoid them, you know, then they kind of disappear. <laughs> and even though they're there, you know, they call it wireless, but it's really just a way to keep track of everybody. And why that's important, who knows? I guess to keep the illusion of a secure society alive, you know, because if somebody's accountable, <laughs> yeah, if somebody would be accountable for lying about pot for 80 years, 80 years, and still lie about it to this, to this minute, they even, uh, they want to take it to the World Health or some bullshit organization. They want to uh, take it off the schedule. They, it sh should have already been done. They're using it for medicinal, you know, right? <clears throat> well, here's the illusion of your reality is if it's only good within the borders of this confine over here, then you cross that border and you're in a place where you can't use it anymore. Where Where's the freedom part come in, you know? That's the way I see it. So whether I'm in Denmark using it or not using it, why is it anybody's business but my own? Well, I guess because they throw up a lot of bullshit on TV. Oh, these people got stoned on pot and the one guy turned into a bat. <laughs> he told him so in Congress. But what he never disclosed was the antidote to return him from bat state to back to being a man. <laughs> so I'm a little suspicious of this bat thing. <laughs> But there's the foundation of your 80 years of uh, torture and abuse by a, a system gone fucking insane. They worship all the wrong shit, you know. Be rich. Become a million, billion, trillionaire. Own something. <laughs> right. If If you take a good look at the financial system, to me, not to everybody else, but the way I see it, it looks like the guy that's got the worst end of the stick is the guy that's got $87 billion. Because if the people decided you don't have no $87 billion, <laughs> what's he going to do? <laughs> you can't you, know, you can't fight reality. So they make reality insane. <laughs> and people seem to go along more with the insanity of it all than the logic, like the Tesla thing, you know. Edison was a charlatan. He was a thief, he, a con man. He, he was an inventor. <laughs> Tesla. Tesla was an inventor, but he lost out because the bankers couldn't uh, just give us electricity. What? You, we're going to sell it to you. So, first they had to do, after they made that fucking brilliant decision, is, what are we going to make it out of? So, they had to come up with shit to make electricity with. When Tesla said, here it is. <laughs> it's, it's all around you. But, mm. and then over the last, what, 100 years at least, the, uh, the advances in science and shit, what people think they know, you know, about reality and whatnot. We're, <clears throat> we're supposed to be energy. <laughs> and when they, they say they break us down, <clears throat> you know, to the smallest component that you're just a whole shitload of these little things all linked together to create this whatever you are and you look in the mirror and you go damn i'm quite the handsome fellow you lucky ladies <laughs> yeah, and that's what happens and it can look, of course unless you're a woman and then you go wow you lucky guys out there are gonna get to look at this whoop whoop and that's what we do but beyond all that shit the exteriors of life there there's this other world and we we've made it solid with all these senses, these uh, five senses we have. Now, if there's senses beyond the five, the collective doesn't want to know about it. If I think there must be, 
because to to keep this many uh, living beings in a state of stupidity for the amount of time it's been done global fucking warming people are you kidding me uh, wow see it just there's your mob rule and your and your suit and your society you know and because it's all based on a bunch of crap and then now there's like laws you can't you're you're a climate denier and this idiot that started this whole thing this al gore prick he refuses to be, to debate it he will not debate it and there so there's no proof to it it's just somebody said and a bunch of other people found a way to make money off it and here we are like a bunch of idiots you know cuz I can't support anything outside of the neighborhood I live in, far as I can see. And uh, to put myself in some kind of a global, you know, group. And you're, you're thinking for the people that don't want your global group. So, no, it's not a global group. It's just another form of uh, hijacking through uh, misdirection and deceit and lies. Because if you told the, the absolute truth about what would make the best drinking water available to us all equally, at no cost, just what would we need to do to make it work? But no, what do we have? The government takes over and poisons the damn drinking water that we drink. They let their, their corporations dump waste into what eventually becomes our drinking water. Now, I'm just a little bit upset about that because I think in a perfect world we'd have uh, we'd have clean water that was good for us, not this, I don't know, what science experiment with fuck who knows what in it. I don't know. I guess you could get some kind of science kit at a science place. Where would you go to get science? I guess the internet now. You could order anything online. Get a little kit and test your water to see what kind of metals it's got in it. Mm. I challenge you techie tards out there in Radio Land. If you've got the ability and the 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 interest and the and the resources to do that, yeah, I I'm gonna try that. Last time I said something about water, my wife went and said, Oh, okay, let's try that. So I'm going to try something else this time. And I want to get a, some kind of a test kit that tests four particular metals. I wonder how expensive that would be. Mm -hmm. Now my Jew side is coming out. And I'm going, wait a minute. But thinking it through, it's probably a good thing to know at, at the age I'm at. Not you. Because all you people, all you young folk out there in the RLM. <sighs> take deep breath and just be glad you're young <laughs> in your mind because that's where it's all you know that's where it really matters the body's going to decay eventually but your brain fuck take care of your brain and it won't go anywhere i'm living proof <laughs> i have been just like this ever since i was i don't know grown up whatever grown up was and i don't see a lot of I, Except the external, I don't see a lot of changes. But now I'm easier to teach, I think, than I was in the day because in the day I had things to do and I wasn't real interested as most young people <laughs> at the time I was growing up where I was at didn't really care. You know, that's what the the, the state's job at school was to push out people that would do anything to, to interfere with the harmony. You know, they wanted that strict totalitarian stand in line and be counted. And bleh. and I didn't. I wanted to be gone somewhere else doing something different, <laughs> whatever it was. It wasn't sitting in school listening to people talk about stuff I didn't care about. And one of the worst things, too, is history. History, knowing it does, what the fuck? Outside of playing trivia, I can find absolutely 
no purpose in history. Everything that we've been taught has turned out to be the exact opposite of what the history told us. World War One. I, I just saw, and I, man, people are just disassembling the original lie and getting to the bottom about why the world has been at war over the last hundred years. And it's all about the Jews. And I blame that on the collective addiction to religion. Because if you didn't have a, an addiction to religion, then you wouldn't have to pick a side. They tried to make me pick a side. And I said, oh, I ain't picking no side. So they snipped. And I went, eh, I still ain't picking a side. Then my nose started to grow. And I still I still ain't picking a side. And then other Jews would recognize me as a Jew. And I go, fuck. I didn't even want to be in your evil prison gang. And here I am. And it's not like every time I go outside the house, somebody goes, hey, look at the Jew guy. But... <clears throat> There are certain races of people who, shall we say, instinctively um, despise the Jew. And I, you can see it in their face, too. And sometimes they're, they're Arabs. And, ah, well, what can you say? But it's all, see what I mean? It's all this religious shit. Because when I do my trading with the Arab in the in the store that's selling shit, they treat me as good as they treat anybody else so on a living situation level the only time the country shit comes up is um, oh when when they hear me speaking and you know there's not a lot of americans around here so i'm kind of a, a bit of a novelty it's it's not like a, a celebrity thing it's just it stands out amongst the the locals but eh, it's it, it, it's kind of nice to be uh, treated well by people that could very easily have a problem and say, hey, you warmonger, blah, 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 blah. I know there's no sides, Finny. The reality has sides. The, the joint, the shared illusion, the one out there in the world where you go out and you do trading, that's where that shit comes in. Oh, that... Uh, I don't know. I guess it's gotten more serious in the States and, and maybe the UK. Where uh, I read... <laughs> oh, this makes me giggle. Non-binary people do not want to be called he or she. Okay, now here's my first... Fuck, I've not even got a visual of this yet. And my first question was... How do you know somebody's non-binary in the first place, right? <laughs> hmm. So for the sake of the non-binary motherfuckers out there in you know the world, if we should ever cross paths, would you do me a favor and wear a shirt that says I'm non-binary so I don't get in trouble for calling you a guy or a girl or whatever your problem is? You know, they're making it really unfair. Because I'm, I'm uninformed. I'm alone out here in Denmark with my wife and my dog and my cat. <laughs> and I don't see all these great changes. Even in, uh, even in Copenhagen when I was going to Freetown. It's only a few years ago. I said easily. I have to throw your name out there occasionally. What would the world be without you? <laughs> whoever you are anyway how was going on about this non-binary thing because i thought it was amusing i guess it doesn't amuse anybody else but i mean think about it right if there if i'm walking down to the grocery store and i I'm, decide i'm going to go to the bakery and i go then the back and i'm walking past a guy dressed as a woman and i don't notice What's the fucking problem, you know? Um, and what if I did notice? Whoop, whoop. Didn't, it didn't interfere in my life. I just saw something else I could have a giggle about later. But it's... See, I don't understand where all the uh, interaction between each other comes in 
because somebody else claims that you know, they're from the you know, planet granite and they're they're not human or a man or whatever we're called this week they're not like that there's something different uh call me me i mean you yeah well vinny you, you like to play the name game that's the vinny i know that's uh probably you'll probably never change wouldn't want you to change I like things the way they are. And if they change, well, eh, sometimes I don't notice a change because I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Just because you see something different doesn't mean I do. I've had a lot of trouble with that concept over life, you know. Uh, because we all know that if 10 people look at the exact same thing, one of them is going to come up with a different thing than the other nine. Then, on another level, all ten of them will tell you a different completely thing. A cl completely. <laughs> Boy, do I need to hit my pipe. A completely different thing than the other nine. And what is it about us? I mean, we, mm, there, there's more to life and human or whatever we are. They define human as monster, so that really pisses me off. Then you go say man, and then the women go, hey, what about us? So, I don't know. How about we just call it mankind and let the women be pissed until we explain it to them? The gender split is my personal favorite. I mean, hell, without the gender split, I, would be, I wouldn't be with Cirque, I guess. But it's good to have that gender split because Cirque's got her strong side and I got my strong side and vice versa. You know, like her uh, thing with the spiders. I don't have that. But the thing with the food, the cooking and shit. She loves to make food, cook. I personally don't. But there's other things that, you know, we uh, aspire to. Like my, uh, what would I do? Hmm. If I didn't have the internet, I think I would be way more busy with the uh, glass, maybe some glass work or uh, or wood, wood or glass for a while. You can even build a generator out of a bicycle to uh, keep yourself in electricity should anything happen to the exterior world. And <clears throat> there's plenty of stuff. We have a we have a bicycle set up already should that ever come up i just need to convert you know over to some way to store energy on a battery but see the links are all there go to the down to the hardware stores up the road a little bit and get anything i i need to continue living there's um we've got it made we just um hmm praying for the best ha 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 because there's too many religious man see we'll never get out from under the all the lies because of what people are taught is true is actually in my opinion of course well i'm not speaking for the uh, real liberty media chat room as a whole mind you but i think that the religion was uh they threw it on me like a net trying to capture me and I didn't want to be captured. So. Now, if that's not indeed what they did with me, but that's what I see them do to other people. So I'm assuming, because I'm looking out with that perspective, that it's got to be that, you know. I see that happening to my fellows. And then I go, well, I don't want to do that. That's lame. <clears throat> and the reason I think I think that is because the whole purpose of the group situation is to have another individual define a book that you don't understand instead of uh, being one interpretation there's the way he looks at it and the way she looks at it and well, wait a minute maybe that's just um, a, like a sign right there that everybody's going to see their own truth so quit pushing the book <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think the book makes it a uh, possible for them to put fluoride in the water because people are convinced from a very early age 
to have faith and authority that, that has no proof. You just believe it. There's nothing to prove it except you believe that what you see is true. So here I am thinking, well, the things that I see in physical form in life that I consider true don't have uh, anything to do with what you can, you know, like knocking on the table. That's just a table. No, that's, <clears throat> it's incidental. It's a tool. Oh, Vinny, no, I don't think you're a religious person. I think you're, uh, you believe in something. Yeah, Cirque said a person of faith. I would say that. But using the book that they wrote you, is, that's a, it's an option. You can go with it or you cannot. Either way, I don't believe, for one, that a secondhand book that was translated from one language into another and then into English. Three translations, right? I don't think that the original book got through. I think it got buried in all the hoopla, you know. The it should be like one page, not thousand pages. That's too much. You, some people don't live long enough to read it, you know. Me, luckily for me, I didn't read the whole damn book. I've lived long enough to I I could have read the book should I have chosen to, but I didn't. What I did do was picked a bit of it to take a look and say, hmm, what does this book have to offer? And it just read like uh, Shakespeare. I don't know. I didn't understand enough of what I read to judge it. So I said, hmm, maybe there's more to this than I can understand and let it go. And what I've settled for is the hurting process of the religious has done a good amount of the damage done to us to date. And that's the basis of it. Just like with the pot, you know, the Mormon church got wind of the Mexicans um, smoking marijuana down in San Antonio. Okay, this is the version of the historical story I read about it. And the Mormons pushed for legislation as a religion to, you know, put the devil's lettuce on the back burner, make it bad for people. And the funny thing about it is, at the time, they were saying marijuana was a gateway to opiates, heroin. And years later, they turned it around and said, well, marijuana is your gateway to heroin. Well, what they lied about was marijuana was a made-up name. It doesn't, it, it's not cannabis. They, so they base this law shit off words, and the first thing they fucking do is they make up a word to criminalize something that it isn't. It was everything but what they said it was. Hemp and cannabis. So, I guess if you're religious, you have to go along with your, uh, you know, your peer group, whatever your peer group says, okay? And it's not, it's, uh, it's common knowledge is you don't walk into your church, whatever church you go to, doesn't matter what brand name it is, you ain't walking in there smoking a doobie. And if you doobie, they're going to be calling the damn police on you because you're breaking the law in their little church building, okay? And that mentality right there, makes me wonder well where's your where's your god yeah you're gonna have somebody locked into a, a a cage because they're smoking a plant and they blame it on all oh, the results of smoking marijuana and da, da, da. well yeah here why don't you sit down and show me you smoke it and we'll document everything that you do while you're stoned and we'll make sure that you don't hurt yourself or anybody else hmm and if you don't like that idea, I'll tell you what, I'll smoke it and you can document my entire marijuana episode, Mr. Pot. But, uh, see, it doesn't, life don't work that way. So they, they write all this crap, everything we've ever read. More, no, the Mormons were in Utah. Okay, this thing's, 
Yeah, this thing spread. These people wanted pot. They were looking for a reason to make it against the law already because they had interest in using making synthetics. You know, when you think about it, at the turn of the century, what was it, Roosevelt, who was vice president, got some windfall freaking oil glut, made a bunch of money, I think it was him, and uh, they had all this freaking oil. Well, nobody to buy it. There was no use for oil. So they, they took the, like Henry Ford made a car that ran out of, ran on hemp. The very first design of his engine was a hemp machine. But oil decided, no, 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 hemp, no, no, we're not going to use that. We've got all this shit oil. We can't do anything with it. So we're going to sell that instead. And, ah, oh, bless you. She's so good. The wife is bringing me gifts. Anyway, um. But in a perfect world, if we used hemp, cannabis, but we got oil and marijuana. And now, here's the good part of this pot thing. Dude. We're getting so fucked. Uh, I think Monsanto finally got a patent. It must have been they got a patent on this. It doesn't make any sense to me any other way. So if I'm wrong, get, get one of these uh, RLM cre creatures on me and, and correct it. But the uh, Monsatan people who sold out to Bear got themselves a patent on uh, making cannabinoids. How do you say that word? Cannabinoids. No, that's saying it right. That's what I'm playing around. I don't mean to play around right now. I'm trying to say it right. Can can cannab Yeah, the cannabinoids. Ah, well, it's a fun word, but. If you if you synthesize it, okay, you're gonna get the same same results out of uh, synthesized weed as they get out of synthesized using oil. Oil, uh, what they they call it? They, I've heard the Russians claim that uh, oil is not uh, fossil fuels. It's a it's actually actually a renewable source. But they pump it out of the ground at such a tremendous, you know, rate. It must take years for it to, you know, become what it becomes underground. But it's it's not dead dinosaurs. That's kind of ridiculous. When you think of how many dead dinosaurs it would have took to to make that much. I mean, come on, please. What is it made out of? Like, all of them? <laughs> Everything else in the fucking planet decays. But not dinosaurs. No, dinosaurs turned into oil. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, I guess there's another conspiracy theory, you know, that uh, I just don't get the logic behind it that uh, you need a, a formal education to grasp. You know, if I had gone to school and, and was taught how to reason my way through these things, I would probably be right in line behind everybody else, nodding my head like you know, I was looking for a carrot. <laughs> That's what I see. And whether I'm right or wrong, anything, that is, yeah, he, Vinny sorted it out for me. Boost Girl sorted that out too. Thank you guys. <laughs> well, I'm having fun. I got stoned and thought I'd do a show tonight. <laughs> Made it halfway through. <laughs> Have only talked about cannabinoids just a few times <laughs> in my life <laughs> but hey there's always tomorrow and i um what was i saying i lost my my train of thought anyway but uh yeah see i'm gonna go back through the chat yeah if you look into the the legality of it, it, it the mormons were behind it going uh going to uh court they were against it and the only logical reason for a, a Mormons, the group to be against hemp was because it was competition to something they wanted to sell that was more profitable to sell and, than hemp. Because you know hemp's got a horrible reputation. You make it out of hemp, and you don't you don't ever need one again. What would the point be? Uh, Henry Ford in 1943 built a car, complete car, from hemp, ran on hemp. Hemp, 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 but no Mary Jane, you know, so 
and he, that was in 1943, and still, the population, they think that you need government uh, permission to smoke a uh, flower. <laughs> it's about what it boils down to. Well, what are you in here for? Uh, murder. When are you getting out? Oh, about three weeks. What are you in for? I was smoking a plant. When are you getting out? 25 years. <laughs> and that's the way they do it. Yeah. It's just a wonder. Oh, we are so lucky to be uh, protected from the evil devil's lettuce. Don't you think? I don't know. I don't understand how it would matter to somebody enough to despise something so deeply without having any hands-on knowledge about what it was. And the evidence is all around you. We're still b gluing things together with fucking nails and hammers and nails and boards and glue and shit like that. They could be making shit that would never fall down out of uh, hempcrete. But no. Why not? Well, that's because when the hurricane comes through, <laughs> you're not going to sustain the necessary damages to make Mr. Rockefeller happy. Because not only does he want you to live in shit, but he wants you to have to rebuild it every uh, 10 or 20 years. Don't get comfortable in your prison. By God, that wouldn't make things right. Mm. You think carbon-bearing material would contain carbon? That's the I yeah. We're carbon-based life forms. That's what I know. I don't know why I know that either. It's, I've heard that so many times. It must be like the God thing, you know. But then I heard the God thing a lot, and I went, nah, okay, whatever. Um, but the mm, carbon-based life form theory. I like that. That sounds good. It kind of puts us all together. That just changes the whole field to me, because then uh, whether you wear an orange hat or a red hat or a blue hat, I don't give a flying fuck. You're just another carbon-based life form to me. <laughs> or maybe you got four legs and a tail. It's still a carbon-based life form. I don't, I don't think I treat my carbon-based um, life form cat or dog any different than I treat um, anybody else. I'm nice to the cat, I'm nice to the dog, anybody, any other living creature. Hmm. Yeah, I've never been one to be violent towards animals or other people as far as, you know, uh, just waking up in a shitty mood and, hey, I think I'm going to go attack, you know, uh, Venezuela. No, go kiss your wife instead. Oh, Cirque says no. Man, all the other bad guys can go attack Venezuela. But honey, <laughs> but honey, <laughs> see, I don't get it. I, I get no cooperation. When I want to go rogue, go attack a foreign country, my wife says, no, you can't do that. But look at the bright side. If it was like, hey, I could pick on the USA, go on there and go, hey, I'm declaring war against the US of A. And put my red hat on a you know, on set it on fire. Show the world I mean business. And uh, right after that, as soon as I'm done talking, uh, surrender. <laughs> An unconditional surrender because I don't want to lose my, uh, my warriors <laughs> in, in battle. And after that, I'll file for foreign aid and buy an island in the Mediterranean, kidnap Cirque and her family. <laughs> but... That would be in a perfect world, and I don't live in that, so tonight, it'll just have to be a dream. Hey, that would be kind of fun, though, wouldn't it? wonder what would happen. Uh, they're posting links, links and links and links on the RLM. That's Vinny. He's putting up a link about, wow, shit, I can't even read about worms. There's so many things in this life, right, that are good for us, that we've been taught to be afraid of, or we've been taught that it was 
bad or evil or whatever the fuck game they played. And there's enough, you know, crap with with the stuff that they say is good and safe. There's enough junk and all that to let you know somebody's getting lied to. I mean, there was a day I could go into a store at 4 o'clock in the morning and buy a shotgun and ammunition and, a, and get a gallon of milk at the same time. But laws changed and 24 hours stopped, slowed down anyway, because I think a lot of it was the Internet was killing people's businesses, you know. The online crowd that was, hey, I don't got to go to that place no more. I'll buy it online and have it delivered because there's lots of people that can do that. Yeah, Grimner's just, I'm just catching up on the chat here. He, he's behind me on the on the radio but yeah my i'm burn my mega hat start a war with america and then right after i start it i'm gonna go i surrender <laughs> unconditional don't you hurt my dog <laughs> you bad americans <laughs> and uh, after i'm done laughing then i'm gonna file for some foreign aid with an unlisted zip code Nobody could find me. <laughs> what a world we live in. I mean, really, my goal in life would be to get away from the rest of these crazy fuckers that believe that Donald Trump is the best thing since cottage cheese. <laughs> cottage cheese. I don't I don't know where I came up with that. but <laughs> That's about where Trump rates on my scale of consumables. Yeah, he's down there with cottage cheese. I don't I don't think I've got ever in my life have I gotten past the smell of cottage cheese to dare to open my fly trap to put it in and taste new no. and my my whole food thing is if I can't stand the smell of it I'm not eating it <laughs> cuz unlike other life forms my olfactory is connected to my taste buds and if it doesn't pass the smell test then whatever it <laughs> whatever it becomes doesn't taste good i made moose girl puke how did i do that hmm. oh maybe it's the vinny links vinny's putting up all kinds of scientific -y looking um can't pronounce the words oh a polystrate fossil is a fossil of a single organism such as a tree trunk that extends through more than one dot 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 well, they're getting all brainiac on the reallibertymedia.com chat. That's where the smart people are. Yeah, they even got people that think they're smart. They got people that know they're smart. And then they got people that don't give a flying fuck about smart. <laughs> but it's nice to recognize others, uh, the other guys around me and gals. Because uh, I like to hang out with people that are, you know, uh, ahead of the uh, ahead of the curve. You know, you know what you know what the truth is. Whether you can do anything about it or not. Hey, Cowboy Tech showed up. Hey, how you doing, CT? Uh, mm. Doing something about it to me is a personal matter. You know, I took it to uh, Rose Hip, turmeric, and baking soda. And, oh, I got that little bit of cold. My wife gave me a beautiful present for her birthday. And uh, I got that little bit of cold. But I'm a, I'm a devout reader of links. And I went to the Internet years ago and I went, Hey, what do you do when you get a cold? And it said, Hey, stupid, try vitamin C. But what? What's that going to do? Take 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C at one time. Oh, okay, so if you take a mega dose, if you're ill, your body's going to suck it all up and use it to fight off whatever's hurting you. And at that rate, you, when you feel better, you're going to stop using it, so it's not going to do any internal damage because you pee it out as soon as your body's using it. Now, I guess to excess would be, hey, I got well, and I'm still taking 10,000 mg's of vitamin c every four hours that might be a little you know dink in the head you might need to go to see a mental doctor at that point if you're you know 
taking shit to make you well when you're not sick. Uh, now I have the brainiacs of the world debating the origins of the petroleum. Yeah. Well, I don't know. All I know is that according to the, uh, the experts, the dinosaurs all died in the Middle East. <laughs> in Africa, South America, North America, Canada, Asia. And a few of them somehow managed to die in the ocean and go underneath the water and go be absorbed by the earth and create oil. <laughs> or maybe those were dino fish. I, I don't. What is the uh, official story on dinosaurs? I mean, for fuck's sake. Uh, if it if they were here, it's it. I guess I don't really care one way or the other, but. It's a great story. It's no more real to me than... Um, I, uh, let me find a book. Um, Hop Frog. That's a good one. I mean, I'd like to believe that Hop Frog was true. And I'd like to believe that people that uh, treated other people that way got what they had coming in the end. But the truth... Nah, the truth is, is that the more fucked up somebody is as a ruler, the longer they survive in this game we call society take the trumpster hey that poor bastard was just born a millionaire and then he went to his daddy and he said hey dad can i borrow 40 million dollars and the rest is history here we are <laughs> poor guy <laughs> how did he do it <laughs> Oh my! I guess if, if you haven't if you haven't checked out his bankruptcy record, I I know him. I know he's got three, but I think there's four. There should be four. And then the deal with the uh, Trump University scam that was, that was priceless. See, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have leaders to treat us like this. We wouldn't need leaders. People would just live an honest life. And there you go. There wouldn't be all this garbage that we got. Uh, the harmon the harmonics and the vibrations are are bringing us this unpleasant outside. Mm. Now, somehow or another, I'm missing all the good stuff because uh, it's very pleasant for me to uh, mix with the society that I'm staying in, but. The bigger cities, nah, I'll pass. And it wasn't so much that it was uh, uncomfortable. It was just too many people. It was like, wow, it's so crowded everywhere you go. People, 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 people. Even when uh, we were we were in a pretty good sized apartment too, but it was very loud. You could, I mean, all the time. If you opened a window, there you go. People, people, people walking down the street, driving down the street. Now we've got a little house on a, on a like a one and a half lane road, and you'll hear the traffic go by. You'll you'll hear the people walk past the house, but it's not as constant. You know the the flow is minimal. And until I did it, I had no idea I wanted to do it either. It was one of those in a perfect world things where I couldn't have picked it. You know it had to happen the way it did or I would have missed it I'm pretty sure of that but we're uh we're not gonna dread any invasions in our one lane little road into town I the, at the pace they'd be all log jammed at out at the main road they'd never make it here it's and there's a hill on uh, <laughs> to come down on the other road. It, this is a very... I should take some pictures of that, too. I think I'll do some um, picture posting over on RLO um, during the next week or two. Because uh, Denmark is it's a pretty little place. and If you haven't seen it, it might make you smile. I've thrown a few pictures of the neighborhood, a couple of the houses, and around where I live and the big shopping uh, place where I go to to do my shopping and drinking and 
it's a one little road with apartment buildings on top of the stores just just like um I don't know. New York's too big. You can't compare it to that because I think four floors is about as high as they go in the downtown thing. And they do they do have construction. They've uh, managed to come up with a, an apartment building coming up. So who knows? As long as I see them building, then I know that the economy isn't going anywhere. But if you're in a overcrowded place that's already built as much as it can, then there's really nothing to gauge it by except uh, how many elbows you hit when you're walking to the bathroom. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hey, Don C is playing with Vinny and J Dread in the RLM chat. Cowboy Tech and Moose Girl. <laughs> oh, I don't. I can't keep track of who said what to who, but I'll look back at, uh, at it somewhere around the hour moose girl says not you flash somebody i don't know i'm just as whacked as the next guy you know and i say that because we're all using the same fuel and that's how i judge life you know not so much by the uh like the physical exterior right there's this guy i, I run into out he's got to be 70 75 i don't know how i can't judge his age too well but he's an older guy and he runs around in this hopped up little um, uh, cart you know those what do you call those things oh anyway the the old people guy runs around on him, a little four-wheeler thing and uh whenever he sees me he's the guy that made the jesus joke and he calls me that at, at the top of his lungs when he sees me coming towards him when he's riding his scooter <laughs> And if the other people don't know what's going on, I do. And uh, that's what I meant about, I'm not quite a celebrity here, but some of the older of the old have welcomed me here. You know, they know I'm my wife's Danish, and that's all nice and good. And they never hear any trouble out of us, so we seem to be, get along okay. And uh, we're raising our little animal farm with the dog and the cat so you know i guess um that's what perfect is to me you know it, it wasn't about i i'm not real concerned about like the guy if he was walking or you know healthy and all that shit isn't the attractive part it's not even the wheel the, the wheelchair thing he drives around on it's the attitude he's got that he's so playful at such an old age and he's always smiling whenever he sees his friends he knows everybody there is worth knowing at least that's what i've witnessed because he says hi to a lot of people but uh he's lived here his, through his life and i'm a visitor in his backyard and the guy goes hey jesus <laughs> ah, i crack up i don't know it, you had to be there i suppose but I told that story way back on the dork table. So, but th there you go. My perfect world would probably bore the fucking snot out of uh, the next guy. You know, I don't, I think that like Rob works grim. They could, they could handle a place like this. Because um, the reason I pick on Rob and, and, and Grimner is they seem to be more, um, capable of being a you know being alone and then being around other people with a balance to it and some of us like me and my poor wife she's stuck with me all all the time she's here she can't hide she can't go anywhere there i am <laughs> but you know but i don't know maybe rob did did uh have a somebody i thought he was a single fellow so i might be uh talking out of my out of my area here but Grimner's a single guy and he can do that he gets along with folks so uh living without controversy in the physical world is that's the plateau that i see people that i agree with and uh, admire the, that's what you found you know because arguing on the internet that's just bullshit we're just writing some type blah 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 now rob says the brainwaves are the same 
if you're connected to it, I can yeah, I can imagine that would be. But if you separate yourself from it somehow, and you just read it as what it is, it's a bunch of crap, doesn't matter, and just get to the good stuff, because there's plenty of good stuff to find, you know, throughout the inconvenience of a little dribble. And maybe a little dribble is good, because if we spent all of our time seriously thinking about shit, never cracking up, the balance would be off, you know, just like... Uh, the vibration and the harmonics. I think there's a thing about balance. Now, I know the medical people hijack that shit. Oh, you have... What do they come up with in the world now? Um, chemical imbalances. Now, I don't know what gauge they're using. I don't know what chemical they're talking about in the first fucking place. But these doctors throw this shit around at people. And they go, oh, you have a chemical imbalance. Well, can you define which chemical and what it's supposed to be and show me the instrument you measured it with <laughs> uh, oh, that wouldn't go anywhere we we all know but you know what you can say to your doctor is no mm. and I didn't even invent it I thought I was the only one that did it but no there was uh, there's other people that do it they said hey your doctor said I said fuck him he, I'm going to outlive him, and he's the doctor. Look look at that guy. Forget it. I ain't listening to his shit. This guy is a waste of my time. Okay, now, that's not something you hear out of too many people that are ill in a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> but I said it, and uh, as the time went on, years here we are years down the road from the beginning of that, which was like 2005, and here I am, and I quit using doctors. So I, I did it for six years, from 2005 to 2011, and stopped in October of 2011, yeah, 2011 and have not done uh, any prescription medication since. And I, I'm an excellent driver. I, I drive slow around the, the driveway. But no prescription medications will pass through these lips. Oh, no. Because they're garbage. Once you find out what the truth is about stuff. You know, they, they call this a rabbit hole. And I, that's bullshit. It ain't no fucking rabbit hole. It's a pathway. And all you got to do is just mentally, <clears throat> whatever mental is to the listener out there in radio land, just do, uh, do what you do, you know. If you're not thinking about a bunch of negative uh, garbage that's going to be insulting and, and cause destruction and suffering and all that rubbish, then you're doing the opposite, which is whatever we're doing, and that's how it works. I I can't remember the last time, except for um, being with the cold, Cirque's always a happy. Uh, she's a not an unhappy person. Okay, why is that? Hmm. Could it be because she's the one deciding how to be? <laughs> That's what I think. And we use the exterior shit to, you know, justify or, or gauge or explain what we're, you know, our happy mood, but it's really just the person that's happy. And if you're lucky enough to be around somebody that's like that, well, it might be a shock to some folks because it was to me. I was very American and very, very English for many years. And uh, seeing people happy just because they wake up was, no, nah, I'm not one of those. Nah, I'm a grouch. I get woke up by a dog. My dog, she, uh, Cirque wakes up before me to an alarm clock that I never hear. <laughs> I never hear the damn alarm clock. But the dog, she doesn't want Cirque down here downstairs without me. So she wakes me up to come down and fill the herd. That's the kind of dog we got. She's not a, like a... You can't sit and hold her, but she wants to be in the room you're in. <laughs> Excuse me. Except on her barking her barking missions. Uh, she's got to be around humans all the time. I've never seen a dog so uh, attached to people. In, you know, in my own... I've not I've not spent time with other people's dogs. <laughs> so the dogs that I've had, they were more or less uh 
either mine or somebody that lived in the same place, that that dog would have one particular human. And Hannah, she tends to lean towards Cirque, but not not to where you can't get her attention away from her. And when somebody else shows up, Cirque is history. <laughs> and the dog is on the new person that just walked up. And we got to remember that we're just like that. You know, we only see what's in front of us. You think, oh, I got 10 million things going on and all at once. No, you don't. <laughs> that's that's just your mind playing tricks on you. I only have one thing at a time. And then words come at me to do other things that interrupt my flow that I'm thinking about. So my illusion takes me. And, oh, I'm being over. Oh, you want me to do this? Oh, you want me. So what? What are you doing right now? You know? We lose track of the physical through the verbal. It's a beautiful game, and we all get played in it. Now, I'm trying to learn how to not get played in this game that we play and not completely um, resign from it because then it would hurt Cirque. So I have to compromise my mental abilities, if you know what I mean, out there in radio land. You know, and keep the paperwork up and be a, uh, an upright, good, you know, good guy in society and shit like that. And the, the strange part is it takes absolutely zero effort to be nice to people. But to go out there and be nasty it would i would have to work myself up into a frenzy about something and carry that frenzy to you know a mile walk to the grocery compound where i get my necessary provisions and the, why how how do you walk a mile and be so so consumed by an idea that you're nasty to the people that you're around and I think that's what happens to some of us. I think it's happened to me. I know it's happened to me. It hasn't happened to me in years. But now that I'm aware of it, I found, well, whenever I'm pissed off about something, you know, if I just take a walk down to the train, by the time I get back, I'm kind of not pissed off anymore. You know, it's like, fuck, what does it matter? That was then and now. It's now, it's now. And go forward. Well, in a perfect world, I could pull that off every waking moment. But in the reality that we share, people want explanations and reasons and why did you do this and what in the world made you do that. And we've been conditioned to do things that what we do to the other person, we don't feel that. We feel what we feel. But the person listening on the other side, that could be a whole nother story. You know? uh, my wife is the nicest person in the world. And still, when she asks me to do something, this trigger in my fucking head from being a kid just goes off. And I cannot understand to this moment why it, it's such a deep-rooted uh, indoctrination the power play over me to, to get me to, to do for you and that I, I have still to this moment not let it go completely but you know we are what we were raised by <laughs> parents are a, I don't know you're not necessarily going to run around your life behaving like a particular parent but I feel I got certain traits that are obvious to family members from each one of mine they'll go wow you're acting just like your dad I think, acting what the fuck are you talking about acting well, nobody's paying me to do this <laughs> you know or oh you're acting just like your mom and the same thing but what acting what the fuck are you talking about we're not making a movie here this is reality people <laughs> everything that you see in here is factual to you, not to me, because to be really blunt, you ain't going to like this, but I'll bet you think the same thing. We don't care. We don't. I don't think we have the ability to care about what is outside of our visual 
uh, interpretation. And if you're blind, then your other senses pick up shit that people that see don't get. And I say that because my vision's always been weak, but my hearing's always been really good. Or my sense of um, smell or taste. I'll notice things other people go, hey, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Well, it's not like I'm going to pick up a $5,000 um, bottle of wine and tell you what vintage it is, unless I read the label. But mm, I've, got, uh, I've got sensitivities that kind of make up for my lack of vision. And then, with all the help I get, like, I got this, uh, what is this, like 17 inches, this monitor? It's, it's huge. Because I can make the print really big and see it. If I took my glasses off, I could almost read the screen in front of me. That's how bad the eyes got. Now, I think there's a cure for this. or There's a claim that there's a, a cure for impaired vision. That, um. Uh, Saffron, 20 milligram saffron tablets taken for 90 days are supposed to give the person a uh, an improved um, vision. Of course, like everything else, it's some kind of um, the uh, the 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 system doesn't want us to have access to the, a lot of a lot of things in the uh, Danish world or the English world, or the Scottish world, wherever I was at. So some things can't, you can't get shipped to you anymore. Uh, I don't know if that was one of them, but I didn't get a good response when I was looking for it. Nor could I find anybody that could physically get their hands on it. So eh, I'm a little sad. But I've had the bad eyesight so long anyway. I don't, I don't think it's going to improve my vision enough to make it matter. You know, at this point in my life, uh, the glasses are, I'm still, without glasses, I just can't visually read. And I can see everything. I just can't tell you if you're smiling or if you're, from what, 20 feet, I don't recognize people. Right, sir? About the length of the room and I pretty much, yeah. I can't tell. 20, 30 feet and, I, and you're a blur. Which is kind of nice, you know, then I don't have to worry about, hey, who the hell are you? <laughs> no, but I, I do worry about it sometimes <laughs> when I go to get Surika with the, with the dog and I don't know which train car she's at. And I can't tell because everybody's in a big glob moving towards me. And Hannah, <laughs> Hannah's just wagging her tail at everything and everybody and then she finds Cirque and then... <laughs> And my perfect world is uh, <laughs> is that two seconds of chaos where the dog wants to jump off the chain. And then she stops and everything's all calm again. Ah, I'm just wild about saffron. Yeah, I know, Grim, but see, there you go. The truth has been in front of us the entire fucking time. All of it. But we've been lied to about stuff. Not everything. Just some things, but with everything, there's a lie in it. You can have a, a complete truth, and then all of a sudden, you go through it and you go, "Oh, except for that." <laughs> and I did it over and over and over. So no matter what what topic, now I'm just convinced that you'd have to show me the proof of the truth first to open my eyes to a uh, a good deed that the Fed has done for one and all, because that's a bunch of bullshit. Look at the laws. Look at the shit that they've done to us in the last hundred years. Uh, it's it's beyond wrong. I don't even know what to call it. Look at the clock here and see how much time. Well, I still got a half hour to figure it all out and let everybody know I'm going to be okay. <laughs> oh, now Chloe and Hans are debating education. Wow. See, because to me, who cares? I don't care if you got an education. I don't care if you don't have an education. The only thing an education has any use for is to earn money in the slave market. Period. If you have another excuse for education, let me know what it is. Because I've never heard it. And I've been around a few days now by God country. That's right. I've seen it all. And the shit I haven't seen, I made up. <laughs> It was real to me. Anyway. 
Ah, uh, so they're going to debate. Oh, Hansel left. Thank you. Oh, Chloe, you wonderful, wonderful girl. She, uh, dis- she deposed the Shah of insanity, and he left. He left a screaming to go down and develop a wheel or something. Have fun with math. Well, beside all that, you know, there's only so many applications in your life that education is going to actually be worth anything. I I don't I don't see it. If you can read, what what app what education do you need? All the information it's always either been in books. Now it's in the internet, and I know from experience. Senators were writing letters backing the guy of didn't want a driver's license because driving was not was traveling was not driving, and it was from the 1970s from Arizona. I saw this? Uh, it was a copy, but I saw it and went, "Wow, son of a bitch!" And now you can look back and see it, everything we've been told about oh conspiracy theories and all, please. Who's going to build the roads? All that kind of crap. Fuck. The roads were from the military in the first place. <laughs> and then, then they learned how to go invade other countries and went, Hey, wait a minute. We don't need to do this. Hey, what are we going to do with it? Now we get this big lemon on our hands. Here, let's sell them cars and charge them to drive on the road. And there you go. Another scam is born. Scam after scam after scam. All this tax I money. Mean, what what's a dollar worth now? Two percent. <laughs> wow. So you're uh, you're in debt, and now they're they've taken the value of the debt. Before long, you're. How do you explain negative debt, sir? Is there a way? Is there such a, the banks don't pay you interest on your money in the bank anymore? Now they charge your rent to keep it there. What the? <laughs> it's not even yours in the first place. They own that. But they're going to charge you for electronic storage of your money. Hmm. I don't think you can uh, store money electronically, but hey, that's okay. Because, you know, when you're out in the desert and you're thirsty, you just get out your credit card and you go, whoops. (laughs) Hmm. Well, maybe you don't get your credit card out. What do you do out in the desert when you're thirsty? You can't buy anything anywhere because you're out in the fucking desert. So, there you go. But the world we live in, it's populated. It's got this, that, and the other. At every 20 feet, there's something. It gives you kind of a false sense of uh, reality. Because that stuff's all controllable by people that, well, there's good news and there's bad news. They're out to get you. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is they're doing a pretty fucking good job of it right now. And that shows in the links and um, the comments and chat and how people are seeing the world, you know. Um, I will definitely solve... I can solve all the world's problems in one sentence, Grimner. And I've tried for years and years and years. And, uh, people laugh at me. Huh? And Yeah, just treat people like you want to be treated. There you go. And then, of course, if you're a psycho, that's not going to penetrate. So th- we're not talking to those people. Those people are incapable of being kind. And they stand out. Uh, 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 it's such a simple thing you can you know well you i i have uh i don't know maybe superhuman abilities or something and i can tell when somebody's looking at me and they're not you know they're planning to do something fucked up it it was always obvious Mm. well now i just surrounded myself with people that don't give a flying shit about nobody else in that social level of, of uh, hurting you to get ahead. That, that doesn't exist where I'm at. But there's always tomorrow. Ugh. See, there you go. Right. But, uh, Grim, when 
when you raised in the city, they had to take me to the desert on purpose when I was like 11, 12 years old and teach me these things. I had no idea. I grew up in the city. We didn't have cactuses where I, you know, they were decorations. They weren't growing wild. So to, to learn all that shit, that you need a knife and a blanket, boy, if you're going to go out into the desert and it's, it's, in the daytime it's 110, well, at night it's going to be like 40, sometimes colder. Depends where you're at in the desert, and you will be cold. So, we were taught how to make fire, blah, 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 do this, do that. How to get, how to drink water if you could find water. Like, there would be like little streams of water, but they were kind of murky looking on the top, and you had to learn how to get to the drinkable part of that water and not get sick. I mean, shit like that, 12 years old. But had I ever been stranded in the desert as an adult, I would have known better than to not go out with certain things in the first fucking place. So, say you stranded in the desert, I guess that would come to, like, your car breaking down. Things like that, but, oh, I don't know. I come from a different world where we were prepared mentally for... Well, I, I think I told this story once, too, but I was driving, um, had an argument with my father when I was about 16, and he, it was the summertime, and he says, well, if you don't like it here, leave, and I scrounged up my $17 in cash and packed a bag of clothes and said, later, (laughs) and just decided I was going to go to Florida from LA, so I start driving. And I'm picking up hitchhikers and what, you know, there was no reason to stop and work at this point. I was just getting gas money from people that were hitchhiking. And uh, I made it to uh, just the New Mexico-Texas line where it was hills going into Texas. And my little 1970 Datsun pickup started to spitter and spatter and I'd be coming up the hill. And it just didn't want to, didn't want to move. And it, hey! pull me over and fix me, I'm spitting and spattering all over the place. Well, I remembered my father telling me about, you take a matchbook cover and to set your points in this, because it had dual points, and he says, you don't need them both. He says, just shit can one set, take a matchbook to the other one, use the matchbook to set the, the points, and your truck will run fine. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what I did. And that's and the truck ran fine all the way to Georgia. But see, who knows how I knew that, how, where the conversation was in all the years that led up to that. I don't have any idea. He could have told me when I was 10 or when I was 13 or last week before that. I, I couldn't nail it down to a particular time. But the information, when I needed it, was there. And all my life, whatever disaster has befallen me with a vehicle or being without a vehicle, I've always found a a solution to it. And, uh, wow, sometimes hitchhiking, I would just take off and go up the coast for a couple of days and not have any plans, not be in any hurries, so I wouldn't take any cash or work or anything just figure out shit anyway sleeping under the uh in the pine needles along us 101 was some of the bad <laughs> see there you go i don't know why of all the hitchhiking i did that this one particular night was great the uh state troopers are not state troopers, highway patrol in california kicked me off the 101 cop says i catch you back up here on my interstate i'm taking your ass to jail So they have this uh, road that runs alongside it for about a mile or mile and a half. That's just before a little city. And in the middle of this road, a mile and a half road, there's a light off in the center of it, overhead light. So I'm walking along the road, and I'm pissing and moaning about that fucking cop threw me off the damn interstate, man. I'm so pissed. I don't want to go to jail, but I I don't have any money. What am I going to do? And as I'm catching under, walking underneath this overhead light fixture for the road, I see something in the in the light on the ground. So I go pick it up. It was a fifty dollar bill <laughs> in the middle of nowhere 
off the interstate on this road with nowhere to go or to just lay in it right in the street. <laughs> so that solved my, my financial problems for the night. But little little things like that, miracles, I suppose, some people of the religious persuasion, if I was to tell a, you know, like Vinny, that would be God looking out for you. Well, maybe so, but, but what about the the person that, that lost it? <laughs> How do you lose a $50 bill in the middle of damn nowhere in the first place? It was the weirdest thing ever happened to me. It's probably why I still remember it to this day, but... Then again, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have needed it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have never uh, happened that way. The cop wouldn't have been a prick. I would have got a ride and gone to where I was going. But we're not in that world, so I guess I just uh, I've learned to make the best of whatever is in front of me at the moment. And sometimes the only thing in front of me is the um, the living room. You know, or the outs, wherever I'm at. So I, and if I'm alone, oh, then I have to entertain myself. And <clears throat> Cirque found this um, company that makes these really good puzzles. I was impressed. It's one of those um, where it'll have five different colors on one piece. So figuring out where it goes isn't as easy as. Your mind sees it one way, and then your experience sees it another. Well, sometimes I just pick up a piece and go right to where it belongs and put it in with no conscious understanding of, of how or why. I just know that it happens. And it happens a little bit more often than, than once in a while. But because I can't see as good as I should, there's this something else that works for me. Memory connects certain things together that other people don't see. Not in the light that I see them in. Which, if we all did the same exact puzzle at the same exact time, some people would be done with it quickly. Some people would excuse me, never get done with it. Some people would abandon it. Some people wouldn't start it. Oh, am I saying crazy shit now? Um, uh, the aliens may drop me in the desert after my abduction. Ooh. I don't know. I don't think so. I think if, if the aliens ever abducted me, that I'd be a keeper. They'd go, man, this one's crazy. We got we to gotta keep this one. Just just for the damn comedy jokes. I mean, fuck. I'd tell them a little Johnny Foulmouth joke right off the bat. And they'd all be laughing and carrying on. <laughs> Proper vibrational frequencies. Well, Vinny, if I knew I have yet to take the time to, uh, to explore that avenue and get more in, involved in the details of it. Right now, I'm just pleased as fuck that the knowledge that this shit exists got through my thick skull enough to interest me because man there's people out there that are friends of mine people I adore completely just love them to death but then fractional what no don't talk about that no 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 we're just here to drink <laughs> you know and Anything, football, anything magical, you know, that's not real is good. But when you start talking about reality, nah, the the population at your uh, party just kind of dwindles. People don't want to, they don't want to know. <laughs> and I guess I don't really blame them, you know, I'm, but I would think that if my end results are what they are, <coughs> and you can clearly understand what you're looking at, then I've been the example to uh, my fellows and not the preacher. I only do the radio because I have the ability to. Uh, if it wasn't for the radio thing, I wouldn't run around talking to people about all this shit. It wouldn't matter. And to the people that do the RLM you know, and Spreaker and BitChute that pick up this uh, crazy show we do, well... 
you see some of it, you'd have to, or it wouldn't interest you. But to just to be, um, not aware, but, and it's not an, even an acceptance. I'm trying to find a, the knowledge is elusive. It's not really knowledge. It's like there are ideas out there and you grab onto the one that, that, you know, makes your dick hard. Basically, I don't know a better way to put it that gets it across to you. Because if it really doesn't grab you to that level of, of excitement and, and interest, you're going to look at a rabbit hole and then that's that. And I've changed my mind about the rabbit. This is a pathway. I'm on a road and maybe my vehicle's stagnant and it ain't going anywhere. But the emotional and the mental roller coaster continues. You know? And at the age I'm at, now I'm learning that... I can get a hold and control my uh, expressions in life and do what I want to do. And if as long as I don't want to hurt anyone, then eh. And even a disagreement with Cirque, never, it never brings on uh, hurt anyone. If anything, at the end of it, we always go, ah, I'm sorry. Because that's what couples do. They disagree once a year. We do about once a year, I think. Just you know, just enough to to know that the other guy's still alive. I blame that on my upbringing, though. I I think that the uh, the negative, you know, that negative they taught me. Uh, what they try to say? Well, you can't have a positive without a negative in math. They use that as an example. And then everything that you do is based on math. Wow. So the, you know, now the road gets a little narrower. So instead of a rabbit hole that's getting deeper, I'm going to look at this as a as a walkway. And hell, now I'm I'm scraping my arms on the side, <laughs> but I'm still getting through it. You know, so a little friction is I guess the heat is to remind you it's time to think about something. Then you can calm down and get cool again. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Can't I? I know defining friction is two two objects occupying the same exact space at the exact same time and because of that it causes a friction that creates heat and what is the heat for hmm. that's my latest question because when you're cold oh man the heat feels good but when you're hot hey wait a minute heat i don't want any more of that so back to balance i go hmm I don't know. I think I know stuff, you know, and I got a lot of opinions about what I, you know, what I see and how I see it. But it can't, there's no way that anybody in the world could possibly agree with everything I think. It's not sensible to think that. But the few basic, found, you know, the basics of the foundation, ah, oh, baby's coming over. Um, those are universal, I think, you know. The do no harm, the be responsible for yourself, you know, the help somebody else that's in need. Because people are, and I don't think it, of it as financial, you know. Sometimes people just need you to be nice to them when you're out in society. You know, I, I'm not a big smiler or any of that, but I've softened enough to where I'm aware that when I look at strangers, I don't think I'm growling at them. So, I usually get a good response out of people when I'm in a social situation, you know. Um, expectate. See, I don't know where that comes from. Is it expectation or... Maybe it's deeper than all that. You know, we just know each other when we're out in the real world. You know, I've, uh, I've got a collection of acquaintances because me and my wife, we, we like our, our privacy, I suppose is a good way to put it. And uh, the world has seen fit to announce herself well ahead of showing up. Ah, thank you, Rob Works. I am doing just that because it's 420 some fucking wire. And absolutely. Wow. Let me get a 
<laughs> sip here. Ooh, I let that one. <laughs> that was a good one. Anyway. And to my drug-addled hippie fans out there in Radio Land, I say cough, cough. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, huh. I wonder what the thing is about being alive, you know, that we've overlooked how uh, how fascinating it is completely. I mean, not everybody, of course, but most people. I I don't think I keep a conscious awareness of it, but when I do these um, intricate puzzles or, you know, I read a, an interesting story, somebody write, like uh, that uh, story I read a couple weeks ago about the truth. And when people, ex, you know, can express themselves in a fashion like that, where they have all the bases covered, they've thought it through clearly, and they're pointing out both the good and the bad about something, or sometimes the, mostly the bad. <clears throat> sometimes I think uh, not hmm, not knowing something is bad, <clears throat> where would that put you? Um, well, I would say that th until I was introduced to Larry Wood's opinion about what he understands about electric electricity, right? What little bit I managed to absorb from the few times I spoke with him, I've gotten to where I'm at now. And because of it, now uh, I have an opinion about something. Thank you, Grimner. Yeah, I over... Boy, I hit that fucker like a... Phew. I was like a sailor on a wharf. Wait a minute. That's a bad thing to say. We got sailors. In... No, sorry, sailor people. I was just being rude. But, yeah, I was trying to cough up a lung over here a few minutes ago. I got slapped in the face by Hatchich. And it could have been worse. Hmm. But I don't know if I'm going to ever get a... I wonder... I was thinking about that. If the aliens ever did abduct me, man, that would be a fuck. I hope they take Cirque, too. They can't just... We're a pair. You know, where I go, she go, except work. Uh, she doesn't make me go there with her. Hey, you, hey. But now when the aliens abduct us, they, and then they got to take Hannah and the doctor. And, well, gonna going to need a few things. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that aliens are gonna ever going to abduct me, man. And you know what? That would be a kick, though. Fuck yeah. Aliens, man. Well, I have just as much fun with Danish as I think I would with aliens. In a, in a strange way that my aversion to language, and I got that from the internet, thank you people, saved me a world of hurt. You know, because uh, there's just certain words that in Danish, when I try to say them, the person listening doesn't have a fucking clue what I'm trying to tell them. So, <laughs> I've still got my notes. <laughs> and just in case, and I try to tell them, and when they look at me and shake their head, I show them on the paper. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, depending on what it is, what time of day I'm looking for it, uh, they might have to get uh, something close to that because they're sold out of the first thing. <laughs> and that kind of translation doesn't work in anything but writing if that ex if i didn't explain that i was hoping i did because it made perfect sense to me because <laughs> oh, of course i'm the one doing it <laughs> but anyway and for all you lucky people out there in real liberty media.com land uh this is closing up in a perfect world i was hoping i'd get rob works to come in on on it with me but uh I don't know. Guess I do get enough, but it's more fun to do the show when I have the critical thinkers. Oh, here's the last thing I thought of that really pisses me off is to those of you that recognize the term critical thinking, 
You cannot tell somebody to think critically. That is insane. Somebody that thinks critically is already doing it. Somebody that thinks inside of a box, well, <laughs> they're not capable or interested in doing so. So stop it. <laughs> Just stop it right now. You're pissing me off. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'll bury you alive in a box. Bob Newhart. My wife reminded me of that. Anyway. Hey, Beetle. So, today is Tuesday. We have tomorrow night on the RealLibertyMedia.com. Channel 10, uh, Grammy's Rocket Chair. I uh, forget the time on the, but she's, I think she's at 6 o'clock her time. If that's Central Standard Time, I think I, well, I'm close. Anyway, but she does it Wednesday. Uh, back up to, oh, he is Beetle. Okay. Uh, then she comes back again for another one on a Friday and does the same thing. Well, a different show, but she she does two of them. And then after Miss Mary is done with her rocket chair, then you get the Grim and uh, Miss Moose doing the Freakers Ball. We had a solo last week because Miss Moose was out gallivanting around listening to music. And she was unavailable for being captured and kept at the Freakers Ball Friday night. Then Saturday... You lucky people. I have a dork table <laughs> at, uh, wait, what is it, noon noon Eastern or 1 Eastern? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It, I started at 6 o'clock in Denmark, so whatever the fuck time it is where you're at, that's when I started. And Grimner carries this uh, stuff all over the place. Bit shoot and Spreaker and... Uh, we're even on YouTube, except YouTube's uh, dying. It's a, people are abandoning it. I think they're they're running to other places, as I did. Anyway, then Sunday morning we got Grim coming on with the blues, and he'll play the blues up until and sometimes during a trivia game. And I was holding my own this week with very little interruption from my uh, dog and whatnot. Uh, Grammy is on at 7 p.m. Eastern, and she will not be on this next Friday. I repeat, error, error, Grammy will not be on next Friday. Must be Thanksgiving time going to see the grandkids and such. That's what I think I heard her say, and I forgot all about it, Grammar. So thank you so much. And then after the trivia game ass whooping I'm going to give you people comes and goes. Then you got um, Hal Anthony comes out from behind his woodshed. And don't don't pay any attention to the shit on his boots. He didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> How is that, Hal? Did the, Hal don't listen to the show, so he'll never hear that. But somebody could tell him. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, Sunday night, and then, uh, at, then next week, one more time, we're going to try to find a hostage and rant and rave about all kinds of nonsensical shit for you to think about or not think about. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for playing on In a Perfect World.